All right, let's get started on our lesson about finding and comparing angles. All right, let's have a quick recap on what we've already learned. We know that an angle is the measure of a turn. And to have an angle, we need two straight lines, or we can call them rays or arms, that come together and meet at a certain point. Here you go, make these two meet together. The point where they meet is called the vertex. The angle is the part or the area or also the turn between those two straight arms, the space in between. So from here, turning up to here, that's our angle. Some angles can be quite big and some angles can be quite small. And what we need to be able to figure out is which angles are smaller and bigger than one another and be able to order them. So here I've got a picture of an angle. Now, if I wanted a bigger angle, it doesn't just mean that I have to actually draw one that is way bigger, like that. That's not what it means at all. Because remember, the size of an angle is to do with the turn of the two arms, this distance in between these two rays and how much it has turned around. So if I wanted an angle that was smaller than this one, I'd have to have two rays that are making less of a turn between the two of them. So if I have my base or the bottom ray here, this ray needs to make less of a turn than this one. So if I bring it down here, and only make it do a little turn to open, then this angle is smaller than this one. If I wanted to make an angle that is bigger than this one, then I would need two arms or rays that have opened up further than this one here. So again, I would need to start with my two raise together, a bit tricky, and it needs to open up, turn, that would be about the same if I wanted to make it bigger, the turn would have to keep going so that it was a larger angle, because there is more of a turn between here and here than there is between these two rays, so this would be the bigger angle. So here we have four different kinds of angles and they're all different colours and they're also all different sizes too. So when we are trying to find out um, whether um, angles are bigger or smaller than one another and trying to compare them, there's a pretty simple way that we can make sure that we um, can figure it out. These ones are a little bit confusing at the moment because they're all kind of facing different ways different directions. So easy way to compare angles and to match them up to see which one's bigger and smaller is to turn them so that they're facing the same way and that their bottom arm or ray is all matched up. So you can see I've got the orange and blue one there. I'm going to bring this red one around and try and match up its bottom ray there. I might move them both over so you can uh, see it a bit better. This blue one, I'm going to spin this one around as well and try and match up its bottom ray as well so you can see it's lined up with the other bottom ones here. And the last one, the green one, I'll turn it around as well so that its bottom ray matches up with the other angle's bottom's rays. There we go. So, there you can see I've lined them all up so that their rays at the bottom are matching up. That makes it easier for us to see which ones are bigger and smaller. We can see that this green one, its turn isn't that much, so it is definitely the smallest angle. The next one that has the least amount of turn from the bottom ray is the orange and blue one, so that would be the next, oh no, not that one. This one would come next, if we're going up in size. Then you can see that obviously the blue one has less of a turn than the red one. So blue would be the next size up. 
and then our red angle is obviously the biggest angle that there was out of those four angles. A great way to measure and compare angles is to use something called an angle finder and there's a picture of me holding one there. All it is is two pieces of cardboard with the vertex down here to hold the two pieces together. Angle finders are great because they can measure the angle of almost anything. Here you can see I've measured the angle of my book with my two rays. It pretty much goes straight up and straight down on a 90 degree angle. So if I wanted to find something that was a smaller or a larger angle than my book here, I could use this angle finder to go for a bit of a hunt to find things that might have a smaller or bigger angle. Look, here I've found my laptop on my desk. So I'm using my angle finder again. But this time I can see that it's a bit of a different angle here for my laptop. This angle runs along the base, the same as my blue angle finder. But then it comes up at a smaller or less of a turn than my angle finder. My laptop is only making a short turn. There's only a small amount of turn in between the two rays. Whereas my angle finder, which matched my book, is a little bit more. So my book is a bigger angle than when my laptop is open like that. Here I've got my peg basket that I use for my washing. Even though that my angle finder is now facing the other way, it's still the same angle as when I measured the angle of my book. I've just flipped it over, but it's still the same size angle. With my... Um, peg basket we can see my angle finder there in blue but then the basket handle makes that kind of angle which has got quite a bit of turn in between the two rays and arms it goes all the way from here to there whereas my angle finder only goes from here to there for my book so my peg basket angle is bigger then my book angle. And lastly, here I have a picture of my clothesline. Now, again, like before, even though it's facing a different way, my angle finder is now upside down, which is a different way to how we first looked at it for my book. It's still doing the same angle of straight across and straight down or up, but I've just flipped it over, turned it upside down, and now I'm trying to measure the angle of my clothesline. So my angle of the clothesline runs along the top here. And then it comes down out this way. So again, we can see that that's quite a big turn between my two rays. It goes all that distance. More of a turn than what my angle finder for my book was making. So the angle between... Well, the angle of my um, clothesline is much bigger than the angle that my book made. All right, now I want you to go and try and have a go at finding angles that are bigger and smaller in your environment, at home, at school, using an angle finder to help you. Well done today, guys. Give yourself a high five for great effort with your learning. And now I want you to go and see if you can find your own angles. <gasps> Wait, just before you go, look, I've found one here between the two minions arms. Bye.